We're now going to look at Video Mapper. Video Mapper was originally designed when LED tiles were just a block at the back of the stage. If you wanted to have a gap, and generally tiles would be taken out but still connected, and just be hidden backstage. Soon, people wanted to get more creative, and they wanted to start doing angles, and this is where Video Mapper came into its own. It allowed you to rearrange the pixels before they went out to the video processor. Now processors allow you to do this, but Video Mapper will work for any project and any type of processor. The first thing you need to do is go into configuration and add the Video Map component. Once you've added the Video Map component, you need to add it to a view. Click the Home button, select a view, right click. And give it a name. We're just going to call it Video Mapper. Select it again and now we can drag out the Video Mapper tile. Press the HippoNet button and drag out the Video Mapper control. We're going to make it bigger by pressing the lock button and just dragging it bigger down here. We're also going to add to this page the video mapper controls. If you select the viewport, you'll see here that we have the video mapper controls on the viewport. Now it's also possible to add these controls to our other view. This will just make it easier when selecting a video map for our training and testing. During the show, it's okay to leave them on the viewport and you don't need to drag them out. So press the home button and select the video mapper page again. And in here, we're going to go into the engine, select viewport one, select controls, and we're going to drag out the video mapper. And we're just going to place it next to our video mapper component. If it goes into the wrong place, we can use the lock button again to move it around. When you're happy, press it and it'll lock it all back together. So the concept of video mapper is on the left hand side, we have the input and on the right hand side we have the output. So what we're doing is we're taking pixels from the left and we're rearranging them on the right which is where they'll go out to the processor. So this, the input, is our stage space. The output is our processor. The first thing we need to do in Video Mapper is to create a new map. So to do this just click the new button and we can give it a name. And then click OK. Now Video Mapper is not product based, so it doesn't matter what type of tiles we have or what manufacturer they're from. The only thing that matters is the resolution of the tiles. This is information that you will need. So the first thing we're going to do is add tiles. In here we have a choice of the resolution. So a resolution of one of the tiles might be 144 by 144. We then have the rows and the columns. So we're just going to do a four by four grid to start with. And then the position of them. This is where the top left hand corner of the tile will be placed. Here we have the numbering index. So whether we want it to number left to right or top to bottom. Now remember that this index is just internal into Hippotizer and it's not any form of addressing for the tiles. Allowing overlaps allows you to overlap the index of the tiles. If you want them all to have a unique number, do not click Allow Overlaps. Once you are happy, simply press Add. And you'll see here we've added four by four tiles. Now, before we go any further, what we're going to do is we're going to enable our video map and we're going to select it from the list. Now, you should be able to see on your output screen that we have part of our mix on part of our output. Now, if I were to move the output tiles around, you would see that they're moving on my output screen. However, if I were to move my input tiles around, you'll see it's moving which part of the screen is sampling. So, 
we have our artistic side on the left where we can build our wall and on the right we have our physical processor side. So if we were using my strip or tiles these would just be in a line and over on this side we could have them separated or however we felt was necessary. In the video map options we have a grid view. If you turn on grid view you will see on the output that we get the numbers of each of the tiles. This can be really useful if you have a processor that automatically addresses the tiles and it depends on which order they're plugged in into which order they will show. You can simply and quickly look at the stage and understand which tile is which. If tiles are selected you will see they go purple and yellow. If I deselect them they will all be green and white. Now if I turn off the grid view you will see that we're only seeing the top corner of the test card. So to fix this we have to change it in Output Manager. To change it in Output Manager simply click the Home button, go back into your Outputs and select Configure. Now if you go into Configure and click OK and select the mix in here, we can choose a custom resolution. Now we're going to set this to 576 by 576. And this is the resolution of our tiles. Now you'll see here, you'll see that the white border does not go all the way around the edge of the mix. The reason for this is the viewport is still too big. So the easiest way to fix that is to double click and you'll see there that we get viewport 1 with the white border. Once you've done that, simply click apply. Once the system is configured, if you look at our output now, you should see that it has the top corner is the whole of the video map. Now, if we wanted, before we add the tiles, so we could delete the tiles, we can change on this side the reference resolution. And this just means that the white box will show around the edge of the tiles. So if I wanted to change this to 576 by 576, you'll see now that if I add the tiles and we change the number into 1, so we're adding the tiles of 144 by 144, and we add them, you'll see there that it now fills the white box perfectly. But on the output, you'll get the whole of the tile.